How's the Detroit Sports Podcast going? This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Freddie Cohen of ESPN Radio. When I'm not talking about breaking news or breaking news on ESPN Radio, I'm always a fan and listen to the Detroit Sports Podcast, and so should you. You guys keep up the good work, man. Podcast of the way of the future. There's not too many people we would bust out a special edition of Doc and Jock. Putty from Florida. You know him from our Twitter page, at Detroit Podcast. He just happened to find us on Twitter one day, all the nonsense that we put out there. And since he discovered our Twitter page, he has been in it, tweeting nonstop. He's a staunch Michigan supporter, our Florida correspondent. And whenever we do the ad for Podomatic, we talk about the fact that we got listeners all across the country, especially Florida, because this man right here, Mike Putnam, has been keeping it down, holding it down, telling everybody there are these great guys out there in Detroit. They're just providing us insights, really giving great sports knowledge via the podcast platform. I'm so happy that when he made his plan to fly to Michigan, uh, going to Ann Arbor to watch Michigan versus Penn State, he said, I got to stop by the studio. I got to see what the hell these guys are up to. Mike Putnam is here in studio we welcome our biggest guest. It's the best feeling. And the, the talk that we just had for the last 15 minutes was awesome. I can't wait to talk to him. Mike, welcome to Doc and Jock's office. Thanks, John. I just hope I don't fuck this up. <laughs> you won't at all. Dude, I'm, so, been I'm here. so happy. Yeah, I'm right. I, I've touched everything and nothing's broken yet. I'm so happy we have another shit talker in studio. Some of the best one-liners out of your mouth to my ears. It's incredible. It's a gift. It's, it's just a gift. <laughs> And I credit that to my uncle and grandfather that let me grow up watching movies that my parents wouldn't let me watch and like Blazing Saddles and all that stuff that I just grew up a natural born smartass, I guess. That's awesome. So <laughs> last night you you were at LCA. You watched the Red Wings game. Yep. What was your impression of LCA? It was your first time. A couple impressions first coming up to it. It was really cool. The lights and everything. I, you know, the, it was just so, being a longtime Wings fan, you know, obviously growing up here and everything, it was great. But then. You get in the building, and then you, first thing I see is Kid Rock's Cafe or whatever that was, and and then we make our way up to the seats, and I didn't know I was con- going to come out of there with a professional rock climbing license because um, we sat way up top for a little bit. And, Did uh, you sit with like that upper ring where they have all the TVs? It looked like some pod hanging down from the roof, and there was people walking back, and like the like you were looking right over the ice, which was really cool. It was an amazing building. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's impressive. It, it ain't cheap, obviously, but it was it was great. We managed to find some cheap pre, uh, cheap tickets on online for ten twenty bucks. So it was it was solid. It was worth every penny. I mean, it was awesome. I was blown away. Now, Mike, a lot of people do complain about the steep nature of being up top there. Did you find that? I mean, because if you have a couple cocktails, let's say me and Adam actually one day take you out and buy you beers, some Michelob Ultras, and we have three, four of them, we're gonna fall our ass down. If you don't be careful at LCA. Oh, hold on one second. We're getting fucked up tomorrow. Oh, it's going to happen. This guy doesn't know, but we're getting fucked up tomorrow. <laughs> well, I got to keep the genie in the bottle a little bit. Sunday morning, better to listen to my radio show. Oh, yeah. Just FYI. Yes. Sometimes it's, it's a train absolutely. wreck. Sometimes it's good. It's real yes. hit or miss right now. It, yeah. And I, it's like a period. It's spotty. Will, for sure. It's a spotty flow. Um, to answer your question, yes. Like, if you, like, I wasn't at no point, like, in fear for my life or anything, but I was thinking, because I've always heard these, that one knock on it. And if you were, you had three or four in you, and you lost your balance. You, you're you're going to end up four, five, six, seven rolls in front of you. Yeah, quickly. Take a little bit of a tumble because it is steep. But the good thing I thought was the view. I mean, you're right on top of the ice. You can see everything. Now you've been to Joe Louis Arena, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So the bathroom situation. No. Oh. Ten times better at LCA, right? It's night and day. Hey, you, did you find the bathroom? There's like a bathroom upstairs somewhere that has a little spot for you to put your beer in the yeah. wall. Did you see Thank that? Thank you for it. I, engineering genius is what I thought when yes, I went in the bathroom. right? Like, these guys were on there, brought their A-game. You're fucking awesome. Yes, I got a place to set my beer instead of just like on some nasty toilet paper holder or right. something. Like, there's a shelf. Like, most of the time, like especially if you have a bottle, you can, like, I don't know, when I go to a party or whatever, somebody's house party, if I don't want to set it on the on the sink or I'm too hammered to realize I could just set it on the sink, I'll just put the bottle in my mouth and yes. try to navigate everything and try Absolutely. to peel all over the place. Yep. But no, they, they have an actual spot cut out into the wall where you could set your brew. Brilliant. 
It's awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely incredible. You know, when the Wings got the two points, I'm like, damn, now they're going to start winning? I'm all for hashtag lose for Hughes. But now you're starting to see Dylan Larkin start to contribute. Rasmussen got a goal. You're starting to see the, the Wings play a little bit better. I'm sitting here going, damn, I kind of want to tank and kind of finish last, dead last. Give yourself at least 20% to win the lottery so that you can get somebody that everybody's talking about being an impactful NHL caliber player that's ready to come, similar to Austin Matthews, I kind of want to lose for Hughes. Now they're on a three-game win streak. But here's here's the thing. With the NHL draft, I mean, yeah, we were lucky to get Zadina. Why he's not playing is beyond me. I, I staunchly oppose that thinking. This kid's that good, and you're praising him to be the player he is. Get him on the ice and let him play. Let, let him get better. But with the draft in the NHL, how many players come around that are actually going to impact you that quick? Especially with a team like Detroit that's usually dead set against playing those players. I don't know. I just, but I like you said. I mean, Ferk scored again last night. Rasmussen seems to be scoring better. I, I just the the team seems to be the stuff is there. I just don't know whether to blame Blashill or I, I I don't know. It just it's it's been frustrating. But there are signs of life, and that's encouraging. I think all fingers point to Kenny. I think Kenny's the problem. That's just me. But you think we have Eisman coming next year, right? I'm definitely hoping. Fingers crossed. It's yes, got to no. happen. I'm, I'm going around how, the room here. How is that not a foregone conclusion at this point? It feels like it is, but I don't want to push all. Like, so look, I know. Let, look, it, it's similar. If you you listen to the podcast this week, uh, the Doc and Jock Show, and I bought in on the Red Wings. I bought in so hard. I've been angry every single day because I bought in so hard on the Lions. I don't want to buy in. I don't want to get my hopes up and then be crushed and dashed in in just upset with everything. So I am trying to hedge my bets here. And I'm not ready to push all in. That's why. I understand what you're saying. And it makes total sense. Total mm-hmm. sense. I have a talk with my cousin. You'll meet him tomorrow. He's he, he's like, Steve Eisenman's coming. This, it's, it's Like you said, it's foregone conclusion. It's it. coming. This is what's going to happen. He lives here. And I'm like, dude, just calm down. Like You don't know yet. Just it, Until it happens, it hasn't happened. And it's just, I, me, myself, I just don't want to get my heart broken. Right. That's where I'm at with it all. I'm still kind of pushing all those chips in. Cautiously. Cautiously. But it, he still lives here. He does. He, he just conveniently steps down this season. He's just going to be an advisor. Right. But he's going to do the majority of his work, if I read it correctly, from here. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of back and forth. Kenny's got one season left on his contract, I guess, or one year. I'm not saying they're going to oust him. He'll probably end up in some administrative job or something. I think he takes the president, he's the, the role of the president, because right now he's president and GM. So I think he just goes on to be the president. Steve Eisenman comes in, takes over general manager roles. Right. And I think, he did a, I think he's done a phenomenal job in Tampa Bay. And him coming to Detroit... It's the homecoming. There is more pressure, though. If you are a former athlete, look at Joe Dumars. Joe Dumars was able to win a championship. I think we all kind of agree he lucked up into it because originally he never wanted Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace was the catalyst for that team. He never wanted Ben Wallace. Well, the foundation was there. Right. But he ends up lucking up into Ben Wallace with the Grant Hill trade. And after that, it kind of took on a life of its own. Makes a couple deals here, a couple deals there. Next thing you know, it's 2004. And you're beating the Spurs. 2005 rolls around. You should have beat the Spurs again. Right. Thanks, Rashid. And Big Shot Bob just knocking down threes, just daggers here and there. So, look, it's very, very tough. And then you've seen how quickly it turned on Joe D. It turned fast on Joe D. I think Steve Eisman and I think all players who go from one organization to, to to the front office I think they all have that that concern. And I think it's I think it's a good concern. You should have that concern because you don't want the fan base to turn on you. It could hurt I think your legacy. It's valid. That's a good point, but I think the difference is you take a guy like Joe Dumars who comes in, who I think we all agree that everything was put in place. All he had to do was just not screw it up. Iserman built Tampa Bay to a legitimate contender. And trust me, I live there. Those fans think they're the nineteen seventies Montreal Canadiens. Do they? They think they have like fifteen trophies. It, <laughs> it's the cups. They are the now God love them because they're adorable and they're, it's probably sunstroke, but they are so <laughs> cocky because their team, they, they have a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. They do. Because of Steve Eiserman yes. and the moves that he's made. He hasn't crippled their franchise with stupid long contracts like Kenny does. Uh, thanks Pab- a lot. Pavel Yo, Yo, I'm friends. And <laughs> right. Are we still paying that noodle head? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that that's crippled this organization. Mm-hmm. Eiserman didn't do that. Mm-hmm. He built that place from the ground up. And that their team is in place to be well for years, as long as the next guy coming in doesn't screw it up. And I think when he comes in, he'll have more, obviously, Eiserman being who he is, he'll have a lot longer leash with the fans. I, I, I think he'll have a lot longer leash because of his legacy here. 
when you look at it though real fast in terms of Zadino, I do want to bring up one concern. Two goals so far in Grand Rapids. Eight games. He kind of has kind of faded away a little bit, and there has been a little bit of a knock that you got to remember that with Zadino, everybody's calling this guy maybe the next big thing. But there were a lot of teams that passed on him. And you have to be a little bit critical because, you know, here in Detroit, we're all a bunch of homers sometimes. Just be critical a little bit of Zadina and just uh, pay attention to what's going on because there were teams that passed on him. And so the Red Wings, you know, everybody here in town kind of flipped their shit when he fell to us. But right now, early on in Grand Rapids, he's not letting it up. I think that's a fair point, but uh, along with that, though, is too, what kind of support is he getting on a hockey team in the minor leagues as opposed, as opposed to... The playing players the he could be playing yeah. with right now, like if right. he's paired, with, you know, if he's playing on the ice with guys like Ablocator, Glenn Denning, or you know, Burke, or some of these guys, maybe even on the power play with the shot that he has, you know, I'd like to see what how that happens as opposed to him playing in Grand Rapids with a bunch of you know guys that are probably never going to play in the NHL. I think it's a huge difference. Now, just pay attention too, because of the fact that you know in Detroit we all value the people that are drafted. This season might be interesting to kind of see the development of the young talent, Erasmussen, uh, how Dylan Larkin progresses because. If these guys, remember that Ken Holland drafted, if they don't pan out, this rebuild might actually take a lot longer than we all think. There's a little bit of a chance that some of these guys that they've kind of put a lot of high hopes in don't pan out. And that's a little bit of a concern because I would think that this level of talent really should be better and playing a lot better than they are. Yeah, and like I do this every – like this year was no different um, than the past couple years. I get the NHL center ice every year because down there I'm forced to watch the Lightning. So when I forced, got it, forced, forced to watch that awful yeah. product, forced. Well, again, if it wasn't for those fans, I probably would enjoy the Lightning more because they are so cocky. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous. It's like being in the East Lansing like week be- one before the season starts. It's it's bad. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> I told you, there's a dump loaded. Dump truck load of shit that I've been taking from Lansing from Michigan State fans for a while. And so. you came now to bring it, was, it back. It was yeah. so, so subtle, though. Yeah. He just, like, it was such a subtle. <laughs> Subtlety is the key. It was so great. He just, like, <laughs> slipped it in and then kept it rolling. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I ordered Center, H, Center uh, Ice Package this year, just knowing <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy some Red Wings hockey and watch some young players and just hope that they turn out. It, it, that that was my expectation this year. There's no bonus on the season. Like you're not Zero. looking for anything. You just want to see progression with the players. I just want to watch and see how, how good some of these guys play. If Ferk gets better, if Ablocator comes around to be a solid NHL player consistently. See, I think the reason why Mike is such a great uh, fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning is that he he's aware of what a tease is like. You know, being a Michigan supporter, you always get there, but don't ever get anything in the uh, in the championship uh, trophies there situation. There's no uh, no collection of See, nothing. He tries the shit talk, it's right? Adorable. No, it is. that was good. That was good. It's good. It was good. <laughs> then he pumps himself up. Too. Oh, I don't remember Tampa Bay winning anything. I think that they've been eliminated in pretty tight situations. I think they're pretty much known. I think they're known in the NHL as Washington Capitals bitch. Isn't that what they're known as? <laughs> Ovi's bitch. <laughs> no, I w- this when it all started, when it all turned, I was there. Game seven against Tampa Bay in the playoffs that year. When we lost, it was. It, I mean, we missed. I think eight feet worth of wide open net, mm-hmm. and we missed that shot. And they they won, yeah. and it was. And that it's all been downhill from there. All right, I want I want to get off of the hockey talk. I want to get off of the Red Wing talk. I want to circle back to the first time you found the Detroit Sports Podcast, and and what happened, what led you to us, and how did we get from there. To where now you're in studio with us. You you flew to Michigan and you didn't fly to Michigan just to sit in on this podcast and for us to have a special one with you. But you flew to Michigan for for the Michigan game. You take you took in a Red Wing game. But how did we get from not knowing who you were to now you sitting in front of us? Not even just you sitting in front of us. You bringing us gifts. I, I told John before the podcast. I feel like a total piece of shit. This guy flies all the way here, brings us gifts. We we have nothing for you. To, yeah, you <laughs> like we're just a bunch of assholes. Hey, I got a microphone in front of me. That's that's plenty of gift enough. <laughs> Honestly, Adam, it was an ac- it was an accident. Um, I mean, I like I said, I grew up here. Uh, we moved down to Florida in 06, My wife and the kids. Been there, oh my god, almost thirteen years now. But I'm still like my my teams are my teams. I didn't conform to the Tampa team. Like, oh, you live here? No bullshit. I I my home is Michigan. It'll always be home. Best thing about Detroit fans ever. They they, it, they travel no matter where. And um, so you know, over the years and stuff, I started looking for stuff to listen to. Uh, growing up, it was huge Drew and Mike fans. Um, me and all the buddies you're gonna meet tomorrow were all. I mean, that was part of our lives back then, of course. Um, so one day I was like, man, I just. You know, with all the shit sports, to, and I listen to sports talk radio all day today, 90% of it is garbage anymore. I can't stand sports. That's why I like this show. So I'm looking for just something Detroit related, and your logo came up with the Detroit Tigers D on it. I'm like, oh, what's that? And so I just downloaded it, and I listened to it. I'm like, oh, my God, this 
reminds me of like my buddies and I just talking shit at a game or something like that. So I just started listening from there. And then when the Twitter stuff started happening and next thing you know, here I am. You're one of our most active, probably the busiest and loudest Twitter follower, supporter, whatever the phrase is. You are one of the best guys to follow on Twitter. You're a ton of fun. It, it, it's really amazing. Just your interactions, not just with us, but with right. other fans. And that's something I think – I know John loves it. I, I love it as well. When when you start talking with other people and we're included in on that conversation, we find that to be totally amazing. And I thank you for that because oh, you're, you're, you're absolutely incredible it's at fun. it. It's fun. Exactly. And, Mike, that's the reason why we did something like this. On Twitter, he can be found at Putty, P-U-T-T-Y 2773. Now, the reason why the Twitter has been fun. Out, man. Hopefully yeah, those course. follows go up. Hey, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> the reason why. You're a good follow, man. Yeah. You really are. The reason why. We, You're a gift god, by the way. <laughs> yes. Your gifts, always spot on. You know, it's Make funny. Make me laugh. My buddies joke about all the time. Like, you could literally have a conversation with gifts. I'm like, yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. it's a gift. <laughs> and he's good at puns yeah it makes it fun when you fire up the twitter and you go i wonder what putty's gonna say about this and you know you're jabbing people and things like that and so you take it in which the spirit in which it's intended and that's what's awesome is that look we're talking shit we're having fun we're not trying to piss anybody off we're just trying to go back and forth debate and and you really said it you you drove the nail uh you hit the nail right on the head the reason I think this has been successful for Adam and I is that the whole thesis was, look, we would go to the bar and shoot the shit anyway. Why not try and get paid for it and, and broadcast and just act, you know, make it so that it's like people are a fly on the wall on our conversations on sports. And that's what's great is that people have found it and they can find it all across the country. We're talking Detroit sports and you make it fun. And that's one of the reasons why I fire up to Twitter every single day going, what kind of shit can I get into this week? And, uh, oh, you saw, what do you think of that Stafford tweet that I threw out there where I said, look, trade Stafford to the Giants for two first round picks. And I just, oh man, people were like, fuck no, what the hell are you talking about? I lit up Twitter. One of the most tweets that we got interactions on probably in five years. You know, what's tweet. funny is when you did that, I, you know, of course I, Throughout the, I can't remember what GIF I used, but I, you know, made it look like you know, like it was from the office. No, 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 no. Exactly. But you know, I was sitting there thinking about. It. I'm like, is that really crazy? I mean, is it really? But the other, what it came back to is, and the reason that I fucking Detroit Lions, but mm-hmm. they're good at keeping me from spending money because before the season, I was all, I'm going to get a Stafford jersey this year. After the Jets game, I'm not getting a Stafford jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no. So they saved me a hundred bucks. So so that was good. But it's um, it's oh, shit. I forgot where I was going to go with that. But um, happens to me all the time. With, Don't worry about it. Yeah, with, with the reason it's so much fun is because I love my teams. Mm-hmm. I grew up here that, that I'll never lose that. So when I found you guys and all the back and forth and the banner and everything like that, it's just it feels like in a corny way you're still here mm-hmm. because you're you're on that. Because I think all the fans here are the best. Down there, it's like oh the Buccaneers suck. Uh, let's go to the beach. Right. Or the Rays, who are they? Are they still have a st- where, where's their stadium going to be at? No, who, who cares? Let's go to Bush Gardens. Like it's different down there. Mm-hmm. Up here, it's part of your life. Down there, it's Let's just do that on Sunday and watch them, and then if they're not good, let's just go do something else. They, they don't care. It, it's it is totally a different mindset. It's right here. Like like I said, Lions lost on Sunday. It's now Friday. I'm still burning. Like I'm still pissed off, and hopefully I have enough anger and rage where I can take that to Sunday morning's program and I can unload some of that there. But it, it's it's one of those things where it just kind of eats away at you. And it gets it gets very very upsetting. And the way Detroit sports are set up right now, right, it's a total shit show. It's a yeah. dumpster fire right now. And that I takes mean, me back to the point I was going to make with Stafford. Mm-hmm. Why not trade him? But then the other side of me was like, our draft picks usually suck, so it doesn't make any sense. It, it's it's fr- it's maddening. It's, yeah, it's mind numbing because you want them to do a certain thing, and they're look at their history. When's the last? This is what I was going to ask you guys. When's the last draft pick that we had that you can look at today and go, thank God we drafted him. Man. Play the Jeopardy music. Yeah, exactly. For the Lions? <laughs> For the Lions. Calvin Johnson? I mean, that's about it. Yeah. You go, Calvin Johnson, in the but recent Calvin past. Calvin Johnson didn't really change the organization at all. Calvin Johnson had a bunch of great years, and he was fun to watch, and sometimes he was the best thing on the field. But now to add on to that. That's a good question. And the reason I asked that, it's Matt Stafford. Because before that, what quarterback did we have where you could every Sunday and go, okay, look, I'm not worried about the quarterback mm-hmm. per se. Obviously, there's a lot of other th- the running game and all that stuff. But Matt Stafford is the last draft pick that we had that was like, okay, that he has one I'm transformed glad we did. The, the, the franchise a little bit. He hasn't got he hasn't got you to the promised land, 
but he right. has taken you from being totally irrelevant and being the butt of all jokes to being regularly your competitive. You might not make the playoffs, but usually you're going into December and you're looking to make a push towards those playoffs. Yeah, it gives Lions fans a chance to have the conversation of how do we get into the playoffs and win and maybe look at a trajectory of getting to the Super Bowl, just maybe. But it's tough because, like I said, it's been a decade and we're still waiting for that first playoff. Here's a question for you. Because you're in Florida, how do how do Florida fans, and like you said, it's different down there where sports really doesn't seem like it's in their blood. It's just, it's like an activity. Uh, it, it like arts and crafts hobby. almost. Exactly. It's a hobby, right? How do they, how do they perceive Matt Stafford? Because here it, it, it is, it's weird because either you love him or you hate him. There's really no gray area. It's either black or it's white and fans get, they, they get so wrapped up in it that they end up going down the, the, this dark alleyway with it. And it becomes no screw you. You're on like, like John, you got how many, how many fuck yous? Oh, 50. Okay. It was so like, like he wanted to, he wanted to trade Stafford. He put through that out there and he got 50 fuck yous. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's hardcore. Normally it's you're an idiot or that's just stupid. Don't be so crazy. But no, when, when people tell you like, no, fuck you, you're stupid. Right. That is like, it's, it's like a gut punch, right? Sure. So how do fans down there perceive Matt Stafford and maybe the Lions as a whole? You know, the funny thing is they don't. Like it, it's the, the, it's it's whatever. There's not like an over like like the, Tom Brady is known there. Everybody and, knows who Tom Brady is, and Tom Brady's the goat. Everybody hates Tom Brady because he wins, and he mm-hmm. went to Michigan, right, John? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. um, Couldn't get on the field though. I don't understand why they didn't use him. <laughs> Lloyd saving Carr. It. They were Lloyd saving Carr. it. <laughs> <laughs> saving it. Yeah, they were just saving it. Um, it down there, like so up, good. like up here, we know our division. We we can talk about the Bears. We can mm-hmm. talk about the Packers. We can talk about the Vikings. Like, we can talk about teams up in this area. Down there, it's like, oh, yeah, Jameis Winston. He's the guy that was stealing crab food from Publix down there. Right. It's th- There's not an overwhelming, like, knowledge of the league or a, a caring. It's like, okay, well, the Bucks play. Let's just see if they're going to win or if, you know, I got you. if Fitzmagic plays this week. Right. It, it's not as in-depth as it is up here. It, it's not part of their life down there, which is sad. It's weird. College it's, it's, is different, though. The, there's a little bit more... Um, so it's like Florida, Florida State. Yes. You've got uh, – um, And sadly, nobody cares about USF, US, and they're really? a good team. Well, because they're in a garbage conference, that's uh, why. You put them in the SEC or something like that, I think mm-hmm. it would be different. But there's you know, the Florida, Florida State hate. It's not Michigan, Ohio State mm-hmm. level, but it, it's there. It's there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, one of my favorite football games was watching Steve Spurrier coach Florida and take on Florida State. And Bobby Bowden was still the coach. And I remember sitting in, I think it might have been my sister's bedroom. My sister's younger than me. I was sitting, I think, in her bedroom. And for some reason, I turned her TV on to sit down and watch it. I don't know. We were doing something. And I I wanted to watch that game specifically. Turned on CBS to sit there and watch that game. I took that entire game, and I loved every moment of it. And I actually became a a bit of a Florida fan just because I love the offense that Steve Spurrier ran. I really wished... At the time, I think uh, Gary Moeller might have been coach, or maybe Lloyd Carr was coach at this point. I'm not even 100% sure. Bo could have been coach. I don't freaking know. Anyways, <laughs> um, I-, I wished Michigan would have done what Florida was doing. I found I found their offense to be so entertaining because it was just light it up. Let's just go. Throw the ball. Like Oregon a couple years ago. Yeah. What are they going to do next? Right. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. It was fun. It's not the same now, but it's – um. Yeah, I agree. At Florida Florida State growing up was another game, you know, rivalry week I would always watch. And, mm-hmm. you know, those were the big games that you'd watch. Um, Oregon, Oregon State, even sometimes Iowa, Iowa State, I'll catch those, you know, that which is early in the year, which is odd. But um, college is a little bit more interesting down there for the most part, but it, it's not what it is here at home. I want to go back to more of you now. Um, we, we've worked a lot of sports in, and we've talked about how you found us. How do you? How did you end up in Florida? Like, how old were you? I know we've talked about this off air before, but how old were you when when you ended up going to Florida? Because you grew up here, right? And then you moved to Florida, and you've stayed a Detroit sports fan, which is awesome. But sometimes it's weird if you move when you're younger, you you almost get peer pressured into into liking other teams. But you haven't. You you've basically been go blue. Oh, I still you, get it. You, you're one of the most staunch. <laughs> Michigan fans that I know on top of it, you're well versed in what goes on with every Detroit sports team. And you live in Florida. Like right. I know Detroit sports fans who live in Detroit who are dumb. If you, right. you listen to sports talk radio, you know, those people, yeah. you hear them on the radio because I yell at them while I'm driving in my car. So, you know, they're idiots out there. 
Complete. Yeah, it's um, I I'm, honestly I keep in touch, obviously listening to you guys, mm-hmm. of course, every week. Twitter is another big thing. You know, the topic comes up and a lot of people will go back and forth because I think for the most part, fans up here are well versed and they do pay attention and they know about their their teams and their and their sports and stuff. But for us, I moved down there in 06. I got a job, an offer from a previous boss. So, you know, oddly, you know, it was the right time, right moment type thing, right situation. Kids were young, real young to where it wasn't going to affect them at all. So, you know, we made the move down just north of Clearwater and been there ever since and you know it's nothing's ever changed like i but when i do come back it's i mean i got all the stuff at home i got all the jerseys the the clothes and i still wear them and people yeah but you live here so, no yeah i live here but i grew up there so here's the million dollar question are your kids detroit fans or are your kids florida fans like my, all the florida sports scene well my daughter is first of all amazing she's 15 she's a soft, sophomore in high school but she's the student, she's a cheerleader, but she's doing amazing honors class. Like she'll graduate college like way early. Like she's super smart. Uh, my son, it was the athlete. He, I still get letters to this day about colleges wanting him to come play. But right now he's in basic training in Fort Benning, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going up to visit him in Thanksgiving, which is awesome. Thank you. God oh, bless yeah. him. I, I, the, the, he's he's doing phenomenal. Um, he's a big Michigan fan. In the in the letters that we're getting back and forth, I have to give him a report every week. I let him know how the Lions are doing. He wants to know how Michigan's doing. So he expects that so in his letters Detroit every man. week. Oh, yeah. He, he, he still roots for the teams back you home. You raised him right. Yes. In fact, on that, oddly enough, in his uh, platoon, he's got they were called battle buddies. It's a, You pair up through basic training for the most part. His battle buddy is from here. And when we go to Fort Benning for Thanksgiving, our families are going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and watch the Michigan Ohio State game awesome. together. That is great. It's free, it, it's crazy how that worked out, but it's it's been amazing. They're an amazing family, very supportive. Uh, military parents are we're new to this, but so are they. So it's it's awesome. But yeah, we're he's very much still in tune with our teams and how they're doing, and wants updates every week. And that that, that makes me feel pretty good as That's well. Awesome. So for a yeah. lot of fans in Michigan, the '97 Red Wings definitely have a strong connection. What was your team? Who was the team that you gravitated toward, whether it be college or? The pros. Was there a team, a collection, a season that was just memorable for you? I'm so glad you asked about that, John. 97, obviously growing up a Wings fan, all the heartbreak with losing to the Leafs and stuff when I was young. That's kind of when I first started to get into it. 97 comes, and my buddies, who again, you'll meet tomorrow, we were at a wedding game four, left early to go meet up with them to watch the, that game four when McCarty hit that game mm-hmm. winner. Remember it like it was yesterday. Red Wings will get it up. Long story I was short, my cousin. <laughs> it's, I, see, and we still remember it mm-hmm. like it was yesterday. And it was in '97, yep. for God's sakes. So the next day, my brother-in-law and I decided to call out of work, head down to Detroit to go to the parade. I'm the, why not, right? Yeah. So we head down there. We get there at 6:30. I'll never forget. I've got a small cooler of Foster's oil cans. Nice. We go to the spirit. <laughs> Getting it in. Yes. <laughs> hey, if you're going to do it, you don't half-ass it. You, you go all in. That's right. So we go to the Spirit of Detroit statue. And we're there just taking pictures, the jersey's on it. Well, a limo pulls up. Horn's just a blaring. We're like, holy shit, there's only like 10 fans at the stack. Mm-hmm. It's 6.30 in the morning, for yeah. God's sakes. The parade's not till 10. I like how you got oil cans at 6.30 in the morning. Oil cans. <laughs> hey, man. You just, man up, right? Um, <laughs> there's no tampons in this party. <laughs> no, that's Tampa. Um, <laughs> limo pulls up, horns ablaze, and we hear guys yelling. We're like, what the hell is happening? Chris Draper comes out of the limo. Uh, John Wharton, the trainer, again, only city where the fans know the trainer's names. He gets out. Draper goes back in and pulls out the Stanley Cup. That's awesome. Total, we all freaked the hell out. I mean, we're like, holy shit. This is, you know, hours removed. Here's the cup. So he comes up. He's passing it around to everybody. Um, Did you get to drink out of it? Uh, yes, sir. Yes! No! <laughs> so it's, I nice. mean, he was, it was, I'll never forget that moment because, you know, obviously everyone's, you know, was delirious because of what just happened, but... You know, he's like, yeah, pass it. He, like, he was all bought. Everybody, get get a turn. We're taking videos, taking pictures, filling it up, and taking a drink and lifting it up. I mean, it was. I'll, I'll never ever forget you that. You still it, got that photo? No, somewhere. Okay. Here, because here's the thing. That was back in the old shitty video cameras. <laughs> yeah. Well, my brother-in-law filmed everything. 
and I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you guys remember UPN 50 yeah. back in the yeah. day. Yeah. Well, we met up with them at the parade. And they're like, how's your day going? And I'm like, funny, you should ask. Look what just happened to us today. They're like, holy shit, can you come to the studio? We'll do a story on it. So I'm on the 10 o'clock news with yeah. my brother-in-law getting interviewed. They're showing footage of me screaming like a blaming idiot. And I'll, I'll never forget that. So the jersey that I was wearing, I put 97 on the back with my name because that re- that moment right there was why I had it. I still have that jersey to this day and wear it that's for like awesome. occasions and stuff. But that's an awesome story. That's it the is. moment that I'll never forget. So um, 97 team, 97 Red Wings. Nice. In second place would be the Lions win against the Cowboys in the playoffs. Yeah, that was a good I got time. those for Christmas, and I was at that game. You read the game? Yeah, the one win in 50-plus years in the mm-hmm. playoffs. Oh, yeah, I was, but he was there. I was there. Of course I was there. <laughs> of why course. My wife always teases me that I luck my way into shit like this, and I have. I've been very lucky sports-wise. It's It's been pretty cool. So Mikey P has been joining us here on this special edition of Doc and Jock, our first non-Thursday edition of, of Doc and Jock. So remember that, Mikey. Um, I want to ask you this. What are you looking forward to this weekend? You're going to tailgate in Ann Arbor. Tell me about the tailgates in Ann Arbor because I don't think they compare to what goes on in East Lansing, but tell me what you guys do. We don't burn do. couches, bro. <laughs> well, we are fire-friendly there, so okay. We, we're, we're okay. Nothing flammable in Ann Arbor, but... I will say Smokey doesn't make an appearance. Okay. <laughs> and I, I will give Lansing credit. I've I tailgated there the year the game the extra few seconds ran on the clock, which I still you know, mm-hmm. I still catch it like, oh well the ref could have stopped it. Yeah, but he didn't. TJ so Duckett. That MVP, was it, TJ yeah. Duckett. But anyway, had a great time. It was very it was very non combatic. I mean, it was great. Um, but the tailgating in Ann Arbor to me is there's nothing better. It's there's so many people and so many big groups, and you could literally, and I'm sure it's the same in a lot of places, you can go tailgate to tailgate, which we'll probably do a little bit of tomorrow. People don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, what do you want? You know, help, help yourself, whatever. And it, it's just walking up to the stadium, seeing the these giant scoreboards. Uh, I've made the walk a few times, quite a few times, with the band where they come out of that hall, and then they walk to the stadium, and they're, it, it's stuff like that. I mean, I've been doing now for the better part of 25, 30 years, mm-hmm. and it's, um, it, it's just amazing. I mean, I've been do, going there since – Eighth grade. All right, you've watched this year. Is this the year for Michigan? Because everything kind of seems like the stars are aligning, that if they do win out, beat Penn State, kind of continue the flow, then go into Columbus. And if you can beat Ohio State, there's a lot of talk that if they win out, there's a strong chance they make it. Is it this year? Before you answer, I just want you to know, I feel like this team could be very, 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 very special. It's a I lot agree. of they keep getting better. I just gave the Donald Trump answer. Very, 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 very special. A lot of varies. And it's... Are you getting all tingly in there? It's you know what it is. It's I think he's got it's his a, hands in his pocket yeah. right now. <laughs> I, I, I think I think it's just a nervousness of letting yourself Believe. allow that expectation in because let's face it, the past nine nine years, eight years have not been kind. Fucking Rich Rod. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I got a little emotional, yeah. but now you hear it in the voice. But now it's like everything's there. The run game is firing. The line somehow Ed Warner got playing like freaking NFL caliber line right now. It's it's fun to watch, but to let yourself think that now they're we got what four games, four games left including the Penn State. You got Penn State two layups and then down into the shithole. Mm-hmm. It's all there. Patterson is what this team has needed for the past 4 years. Now you've got a capable smart quarterback that's not losing you games. Uh Higdon is a monster. So and the only thing you can ask for at this time of the season at pretty much any level is have everything laid out to where you can handle your business. You don't have to rely on another team to take care of your shit for you. Yeah, home to Rutgers, then uh, away to Indiana. Yeah, so two teams that, let's face it, shouldn't even be in the Big Ten anymore. But Definitely not Rutgers. Rutgers is, God, please get rid it's of that dumpster team. fire. But to answer your question, yes, the excitement is there, but it's a cautious excitement because we've seen stuff happen. But to counter that is, yeah, but now we have a quarterback and a very solid running game, and Harbaugh seems to have figured out the play calling consistently to where you know they're, they're not losing games because of it they're prov- now they're saving games because of it i mean you saw what happened in lansing i mean it's it was stable it was consistent and, and that was comforting to see yeah i don't blame you i don't think michigan fans in the better part of a decade have seen anything close to a college football playoff a big 10 title they don't know what to feel because there's a lot of expectation they have their guy jim harbaugh and now with this season as it's played out only one loss a great defense now you have Shea Patterson, your quarterback. Many people want to believe, but also they don't want to set themselves up to fail. And that's the heart of a sports fan, and especially with Michigan fans, they haven't seen it in the better part of a decade. So they don't know what to expect, and they don't want to be let down. I love how this man's a loose cannon on Twitter. 
and just like just guns blazing all the time. <laughs> but when it comes to his expectations, he's super cautious. Yeah, I'm cautious. I'm cautious. I'm a little I'm scared. A little, little nervous. I don't want to push. I don't want to push it. I'm not sure. <laughs> don't kid yourself. <laughs> Tomorrow, when the first few shots go in, yes. and we're in Ann Arbor, and next thing there, you know, no shirt, no shirt on. I will, we will fucking beat everybody. That's tomorrow. right. That's <laughs> a, the whole world. Alabama. Nick Saban, once you come to town, so we can you're, kick your you're ass. You're gonna love it. my cousin. That's what's Same gonna happen deal. tomorrow. That's but awesome. yeah, thinking rationally right now, yes. They can beat legitimately anybody in the country right now if they play their game in as opposed to the way it's been for the past four years because they have all the tools there. Quarterback, line, running game, solid secondary. I, I want to know what your thought is on this. So the one thing I've noticed about watching Patterson play, and he's gotten better every single week, much like this Michigan team has. Right. When they go to to the to the read option, and it comes to that point where they're, they're at the mesh point, right? Where he's got to stick the ball in or he's got to pull it out. He, he does a phenomenal job, I feel, reading what's going on with the defense and making that decision on, 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 a, on a snap, right? And when he gets loose, when he decides to keep it himself and he's running down the field, he has what I call a little bit of wiggle. He, he's not, he doesn't have breakaway burn you speed. But he's just elusive enough to where he can avoid a tackle, he can avoid a big hit, he can make you miss, and he can go pick up an extra two, three, four, five, ten yards. And it, it's just, it, it's nothing, it's, it's hard to describe what it is, I, at least for me it is. So I refer to it as him just having a little bit of wiggle in his hips. And it's just just subtle things that he does that you you haven't seen from a Michigan quarterback in forever. And it's something that you haven't really got to watch if you only watch Michigan games you don't watch anything else in the Big Ten you don't watch anything that Ohio State does you don't watch anything that any of these other read option quarterbacks do you miss it but he does it so well and they've done a good job I think melding what he does as a quarterback to to fit what Harbaugh wants with his with his more uh, pocket passer approach and what he does well with the read option and getting loose and getting down the field Am I, I, am I crazy right. here? No, you, I think you you nailed it because the reason he's not a world beater by any means when it comes to that dual threatness, but mm-hmm. I think the reason he's so successful is because he does two things extremely well. One, like you said, he reads the play. And the second thing he does is he's very good about waiting that extra half second to either let the ball go or to pull it pull it out and take it and run. And if you go, go back and watch the highlights and look what the cameraman's doing. Yeah. It, it, that happens yes. numerous times. All the time. They All don't time. know either. It, 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 dude, I'm watching the game, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm following the ball carrier. I'm like, oh, wait, shit, you don't have the ball. Oh, <laughs> where, where, next oh, thing you know, he's Patterson. going down yes. the sideline for 80 yards. Yes. Like, that play specific. I'm like, what is happening? Yes. He still has the – I didn't even see it. Yes. He does a great job disguising it. Yeah, and it, he, it's, he keeps it in there tight, it's and you little can't see what he's doing. things like that that I think separate really, really good college quarterbacks from college quarterbacks that have the potential to possibly be elite. Right. And we haven't seen him in this offense long enough to, to really give him that elite moniker. Right. But he does subtle things like that so, so well. And it's it's the difference in, in a lot of these games. You know, you're 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 getting through the the toughest part of your schedule right now. You beat Wisconsin, you beat Michigan State, you now have Penn State. And yeah, these teams I don't think look as good as we originally thought they would look in the beginning of the season, but you're getting through them and it's some of these games aren't even competitive. They're still tough division games. Yeah. Whether it's Michigan State, I don't care what anybody says, that game, it's it's a, t- mm-hmm. it's a total rivalry game. It doesn't matter what the records are. They're good teams, mm-hmm. and they're going to play you with everything they got. Okay, in Ann Arbor, Michigan versus Penn State, what are you both expecting? What's going to happen? What is going to happen when Michigan takes on uh, James Franklin and that uh, you know kind of decent offensive line, but uh, really led by a quarterback similar to Shea Patterson, a guy that you're going to have to pay attention to on that defense, Trace McSorley. What are you guys expecting? You're the guest. You go first. Um, I'm going to say two things. One, my Twitter self says, I hope they fucking steamroll Penn State for throw, rolling up the score last year, which if you've read oh, the blue. articles, Don Brown has not forgotten about oh. it. Revenge tour, baby. And if there's any defense in the country that you don't want to have out for blood, it's this one. So I, I literally, I hope they roll up 40, and I hope they steamroll the shit out of Penn State for that. Um, I expect them to, to win big tomorrow. I honestly do. I'm I'm same boat. I think they put an ass whipping on Penn State, and there there's not a whole lot with Penn State I like. When, going into the season, I wasn't really high on them. Uh, I thought last year that team was basically carried on the back of Saquon Barkley. 
I thought Trace McSorley popped in when he needed to pop in, but that was Saquon's team. You don't have Saquon this year. You do have a very good running back there, but it's now Trace McSorley's team. I don't trust Trace McSorley as a quarterback, and I think this defense that Michigan has can do a good enough job to stop a running quarterback. That's something you haven't been able to say about a lot of Michigan teams and a lot of Michigan defenses is being able to stop a running quarterback. Usually a running quarterback causes fits and gives headaches. I think this year is different. Again, I said I think this team has the the, the potential, and I think they, they're looking like they're going to be very special. I think big things are ahead of them. They have to get through this game, and then you've got to go beat Rutgers. You've got to beat Indiana, and it sets up for Thanksgiving weekend when you take on Ohio State, and you hopefully – Hopefully, you pull an undertaker maneuver and you pile drive them into the concrete. And I want to see, to use a horrible, horrible pun, I want to see McSorley get chased all over the place tomorrow. And I want Winovich to eat him alive tomorrow. I just, I want him to just demoralize him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think he will because I just want him to talk shit all game long. And you said it last week. I love Winovich. I could just give me a game of a camera and a microphone just on him Mm -hmm. because that's what I want to see. That that guy's, he's awesome. Yep. Mike, thank you so much for being part of the Doc and Jock family. Follow Mike on Twitter at Putty, P-U-T-T-Y, 2773. He's a big, huge Detroit sports fan, a fan of the podcast. We invited him here. That's what this is about. If you're good enough to interact and you're kind enough and you got some great sports takes and you're not a total idiot, we'll have you here. That's the whole point. (laughs) That's the whole point of this podcast is that Adam and I are just regular folks that we just talk shit on the Internet, and that's what we love to do. And Mike... This hour's gone by way too fast, man. But uh, look, I'll say this. I'm not a Michigan fan. I always hope they lose. But if they do have a chance to get to the Big Ten title game, I hope they lose. I hope you guys can get maybe so close one game away from that prize like State got to feel. It's no better feeling, I'll tell you. I've actually had the experience of feeling what it's like to get to a game versus Iowa. You're losing late, and you have a great drive where you just pound the ball, run it all the way. It's a great feeling. I'll tell you it's like. to, To add one quick thing, I know we're running out of time, but you know what I love about Spartan fans? Us losing makes your season. Yes. You losing, That's so I don't care. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I don't care. But I seem to recall when you defeated Michigan State in our place, you guys danced around like you won we something. Did. And so it's a real rivalry. When and you that's had a shitty 3-9 about... and nine season, yes. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. It's a real rivalry where you go, okay, when Michigan loses, I feel great. When well, Michigan well, struggles, I feel great. And look, I'll be honest, I'm not a trained journalist. In the press box, when Michigan fucks up a play, I'm happy inside. <laughs> here's, here's a question for you. Does, is, Hold on, does this... One sec. If you were on the way to the playoffs, wouldn't you dance a little bit? Yeah, oh, I, I think they should because they've been so starved for success. They got to have some some level of pride. They are starved for success. How hungry are you guys? Oh, man. You guys uh, just can't wait to get to the Motor City Bowl, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm just trying, I just want to see a 15 yard touchdown pass. You guys can Come take on. on Central. Central is horrible. I just want the right quarterback to, to throw the ball to the right receiver. Come right. on. Who's playing this week? Is it Rocky or is it Lewerke? It's going to be Lewerke, I think. It's got to be Rocky, right? Yeah. Le- Rocky? Versus, it's got to be Lewerke. They merged. It's versus Maryland. Better not lose to a. It sounds you know, like an 80s sitcom. Better not Rocky lose to Maryland. Lewerke. Yeah, they better not lose to Maryland, for sure. Uh, let me ask you this. Damn it, where was I going? See, I, I lost my train see? of thought. Ah, shit. All right, anyways, go ahead, do what you can do. I'll yeah. ask how the basket them off here. Any, <laughs> any parting shot from our friend Mikey P? Um, No, I, honestly, I'm just happy to be – this is crazy. All the Michigan sports stuff here in the office, all the Detroit stuff, yes, and even that green shit you got over there in the <laughs> corner is not too bad. It's not a plant. Um, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> ju- just happy to be here. I'm just thrilled to death you guys had me in there because I'm just some – fan schmuck like anybody else and it was just come in here and do this no 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 you're not just some fan schmuck this way you are the fan (laughs) and we'll check a little bit of a schmuck but it's cool i'll take that (laughs) this won't be the last time you hear putty on our airways for sure now we got the contact we get a cell phone number we can dial him up because we record anytime we can splice you in and like i said mikey also is a guy that was passionate on the voicemail. So if you like what you've heard, oh, no, he wasn't just passionate. There, funny, there, there was funny. some production to it. Like production. he was, like, he was like, I need this and I need, I need that, and, and he, he timed it all out. Like it was perfect. Did you, did you like have a dry run before you called? No, I was really drunk. Oh, you really drunk. That was awesome. I was ri- Tito's. <laughs> that, 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 Shout out to Tito's. <laughs> you're allowed. That, that was better than some of the stuff I do for yeah. the radio station. <laughs> you're allowed. Get drunk. Call the voicemail two four eight five seven nine eight six eight six. It's available twenty four seven. For anybody listening across the country, 248-579-8686. You've heard another edition of the Doc and Jock podcast. Go green, go blue. Mikey, thank you so much for coming. It was awesome to talk with you. Thanks, guys. Loved it. Thank you, Mikey. Thanks, John. I just hope I don't fuck this up. This was locker room talk. Second dick. Sorry, Detroit. (laughs) Didn't quite work out. And all I can say is Detroit Sports Podcast scores. I have voices in my head. They counsel me. 
understand they talk to me.